is episode one of Creativity Sparks, and we're doing self-portrait today, but we'll get to that in a minute. I want to talk first about what sparks are. Sparks are a way to spark your creativity. And so it can help you through writer's block. It can help you if you just feel like kind of dull for the day and you want to do something fun. This is a good way to spark your creativity. So maybe you're going to be starting creating art or writing something, maybe poetry or a poem. So hopefully these can help in those ways. These are for everybody. It's great for school kids. It's great for moms and dads. It's great for the elderly. Everybody can do a creativity spark because they're just coming from you. It's showing that everybody really is creative. To start things off today, before we do self-portrait, I want to talk about our supplies because it's nice to have all of our supplies laid out in front of us when we're ready to start our sparks. And so we have a supply list that we'll put up for you. And one of the things that's important is to have a notebook or a journal. I happen to have my Creativity Sparks journal. And in here is a place where I can keep track of all of my artwork. But the best thing is the blank pages because I know that I can create more art or writing and put it right in here. But maybe you want to do a journal that's more of a notebook. So I have a, note I have a notebook journal too because I like to write a lot and I like to keep track of things. And so you can Maybe you want to choose to do this. Um, we're going to need paper, writing paper, either writing right in your journal or writing on lined paper. You're going to need drawing paper. Any paper will do. It really doesn't matter. If you want to draw on your writing paper, have at it. Not a big deal. But we can use this too. Or if you want to get real fancy about it, you can buy drawing paper, and this is a nice pad of plain white drawing paper that you can draw on. And if you want to get really, really fancy about it, which we'll do a little bit of during this, these episodes, is watercolor paper, which has a different texture to it. And so we can talk about watercolor paper when we get to that. But to do all that, you're going to need a drawing utensil, so a pencil, any kind of pencil. I like to use these pencils a drawing pencil, or your good old number two pencil is always good. Sometimes when I write, usually when I write, I like to write in pen. So I always have a pen at hand so that I can write. If you're working with pencils and, and drawing pencils, you're going to need a good old eraser because we all make mistakes. And so here's your basic eraser, but you know the one I really like? I like this kind of an eraser. This is a kneaded eraser. And so the neat things about a kneaded eraser is that you can knead it. And so while you're pondering what you're working on, you can actually be kneading your eraser. And then you can get in, I'll show you later, but we can get into really tight spaces because we can knead it to a point and really erase nicely with that. These are really inexpensive. You can get them just about anywhere, but they're good stress balls too. <laughs> so when you're, when you're creating and you're getting a little stressed out. Glue and tape. Any kind of glue, any kind of tape, something that we can affix what we've created to our journal. So if you decide to do something on separate paper, you can then put it right into your journal. So that's handy to have. Then you're going to want to have tools to add color. And so when we create things, when we come up with things, you'll see as we go along, we might want to find some ways to add some color. So you're going to need maybe whatever you choose to use, colored pencils, are always nice. You can use markers. I prefer the Sharpie markers, the really thin, ultra-fine Sharpie markers. I have a bunch of these. Um, you can use paints and brushes. You can use watercolors. I have a, a set of watercolors here that you can use those. You can use a tube set of watercolors, whatever you prefer. Your brushes, all different sizes, fat ones, thin ones chiseled ones, and don't forget your pot for water, because you're going to, if you're going to be doing watercolor, you're going to need water. Oh, and one thing I forgot too is a handy little pencil sharpener in case you want to sharpen your pencil when you're writing. Um, and so those are your supplies. We're not going to need them for every episode, but it's nice to have them at the ready just in case the spirit moves you to add some paint to something. Who knows? Maybe you're not going to want to add any color to what you're doing. 
But today, we're going to start with our episode one is self-portrait. Now, when I think of a self-portrait or any kind of a portrait, I think of something like this. So this is a portrait of someone. I have no idea who it is. It's usually from about your shoulders up. This guy looks pretty boring, doesn't he? <laughs> He's pretty darn boring. The colors are bleh. Yeah. Okay, don't no offense, sir, but we can do better. So we are going to make today a self-portrait. But to even make it more interesting, we're going to do it from behind. So you have to think about what you, what you look like from the back of your head. Now, when I was teaching school, I always told my students I had eyes at the back of my head, and they believed me. Um, but So you're going to need to draw the back of your head. Really easy to do, because we don't care if you make a mistake. Mistakes are interesting. Perfection is boring. So just try your best. So I'm going to take my drawing pencil for this, but you can use any pencil that you want. And I'm going to draw the back of my head. But to start it off, I'm going to first draw just an oval. So I'm going to draw if you can see it very well, but I drew an oval. Then I'm going to think about my hair. Now my hair has gotten really long since I haven't been to the hairdresser in a long time. And so my hair kind of, to me, looks like this. <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to sort of tame it down a little bit. And I'm going to draw sort of, yeah, it's gotten long. So I'm just going to draw my hair, not make a lot of, not spend a lot of time on it, but did that. I don't need my oval anymore, because now it looks like I'm going to put my face in here, right? So I'm going to erase my oval. I'm going to take my nice eraser here, quickly just erase that oval, and not worry about it anymore. It was more of a guide to help me figure out where my hair is going to go. So I erased it. So now I kind of look like the back of my head. But what we're going to do is we're going to think about this. And this is the part, the creativity part, where you stop and really think. And for this piece, this self-portrait, I'm going to be creating pictures, sketches, of things that I like to do. So you really have to stop and think. This is a time to be quiet and really just think, what do I enjoy doing? Well, one of the things that I really like to do is to garden. So I'm going to draw a flower. And the flower will represent gardening to me. So I just really quickly sketched a flower. What else do I like to do? Um, I like to read. Who doesn't like to read? Look at all these books around here. But I like to read, so I'm going to draw a book. And again, it's okay if you make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. And you know what? When I make a mistake, I either erase it and fix it, or I go with it, and they sometimes end up being the nicest things that I create. So I'm going to just quickly draw a book. If I made a mistake, I'd fix it with my needed eraser. I'm going to go through all of this, and then eventually I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to outline everything so it's easier to see. And so I've done that ahead of time so that you can see. And here's what I've created so far. So I've got my gardening represented by my flower. I've got the book representing that I like to read. I did a tomato here because I like to garden and, and grow vegetables piece of paper because I like to write. I drew an alpaca because I live on an alpaca farm and I love being out in the barn with my alpaca. So I like to play with my alpacas. I did a paint palette because I like to paint. I like to go for walks, so I did my footsteps. I thought about actually drawing me walking, but I thought, Ugh, I have to draw me walking? That's really hard to do. <laughs> So I did my footsteps. It still represents to me that I like to walk. I like to kayak. 
And so I did a little kayak there, and I put some water around it, which you'll see in a minute. I like to do yoga, so that's me meditating and doing yoga. I like to work in my barn. I do a lot of barn work with the alpacas, and we have chickens too. So I drew my barn, and over the past month or so, I've started taking fiddle lessons online. And so I've got my little fiddle down here. <laughs> Wear your earplugs if you see me with my fiddle out, but I've got my fiddle down here. So you see that I did everything in pencil first, and then I went through with a dark marker, doesn't matter what color, and just outlined the whole thing. There's still some pencil in there. And so I can take my eraser and I can, the neat thing about these markers, is I can just erase right over what I've got there, and you're just going to see the outlines of all the, the pieces of things, the, the bits of things that I really enjoy doing. So, you know, when I, when I do this, I really stop and think about each thing. I put each thing really in my mind, and as you're drawing it out, you're really thinking about that event or that thing that you enjoy doing. And once you have something like this, there are many uses for it. So one of the things that I did was I decorated it. So I painted it. I got my, used my watercolors, and I went around here and did some watercoloring. I did a few outlines around my hair, and then I colored in each of the pieces. Now this in itself, to me, is a work of art. Maybe not to you, but it's a work of art. It's something that you could easily frame and put up on your wall, or you could put it on your refrigerator. You could take it and put it inside of your journal, which is what I'm going to do with mine. Because now, to use this for our creativity, not only do we create something that's beautiful and represents who you are, you can now use this to write about these things. Because we write about what we know about. And these are all things that I know about. And I, can, I could write a story. I could write a poem. I could write a story about each of my alpacas. I have four of them, and they were all rescued. They had really hard lives before they came to live with me and my husband, Bill. And so each of them has their own personality, and each of them seems to love us. I can write about them. I can write about kayaking. Bill and I went on a kayaking jaunt on the Haw River the other day, about two weeks ago, and it was beautiful. We saw three eagles, we saw a big white bird, we saw a great blue heron flew overhead. I can write a poem about that, I can write a story about that, but it's going to spark my memory and it's going to spark my creativity so that now I can use these pieces to do, to create different things. I can decide I want to do a painting. Oh, my barn. I'd love to do a painting of my barn. So now there it is, reminding me. Do a painting of me one day. But if I put this, if I take this and put this into my journal, if I go to my next empty page of my journal, I can tape it in, I can glue it in, whatever I want to do with it. I can put it right in here so that when I'm Three, four months from now, oh, I want to write about something, but what do I write about? Ah, I've got all of these different activities that I can write about. So you can use this for so many things. You can, you can do a portrait of a friend. You can do a self-portrait. My a really good friend of mine's name is Ellen. And I can do a, a portrait of Ellen. Her hair is going to look a little bit different than mine. I think it's a little bit shorter than mine. But I know her because she, we've been friends since kindergarten. And I can write, I can sketch in here all the different things that Ellen has done or enjoys doing. And I could send it to her. What a great gift that would make for someone. Or I can write about her based on what I did here. What if you're writing a story and you're making up a fictional story and you want to develop your character? Do a portrait of your character. You can do what the character's head looks like, you know, short hair, long hair, ponytail, mullet, whatever, and develop in here, what does that character like to do? And this can help you to write, to develop your character and then write about what your character likes to do. You could do this again for yourself to say, this is a self-portrait of things that I love. 
not necessarily things I love to do, but things I love, or people who are special in my life, or items at home that I really enjoy. So all those different things, it's got so many different benefits to tapping into your creativity and sparking your ideas for things. So I'd love to see what you do. I would love it if you would email me pictures of either your self-portrait or a portrait of someone else that you did and tell me how it helped you. Or if you start writing or painting from your portrait, I'd love to see that too. And at the end of this program, we'll have my email up so that you can email me and I promise I will write back because I love to talk to people. So that's our episode on self-portrait. Again, please send me yours and if I get your permission, I would love to share some of your work too on upcoming episodes because I think it's really fun to see what other people are creating. And thinking about that too, I think about art a lot and I, I just want to, this is going to be a part of our, each episode that gets us more aware of the art around us. And so my question to you is, where do you find art? Where do you find art? And today I'm finding art, I'm listening to it. Can you hear that? I hear a song called Groundhog, and it's written by a friend who lives right here in Bynum. His name is Stephen Myers. And he created art. Can I see it? No, but I can hear it. And that art is music. It's the sound I'm hearing. He had to compose the music. That was art in itself. He's playing the instrument or instruments. He's a one-man band, so he can play a lot of instruments. So he's an artist too. And today I'm hearing art. So think about where you find art. Let us know about that too, but just be more aware of it. So let's sign off with a quote. Our quote today is, start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. That was a quote from tennis great Arthur Ashe. And I think that wraps up everything that we've been trying to do here. So. Please send your thoughts about this episode, your creations, send them directly to me at barbara at wildsart.com. And I promise I will get back. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.